Hello and welcome back to The Hill. I am your host, Worthington Moore, and joining me on today are the president and planning and event chair of PV Spectrum, Ms. Sephora Williams and uh, Ms. Renee White. How are you guys doing on today? Hi. Doing good. <laughs> good. All right, all right. So um, uh, the first thing that I will ask is um, if you just tell us a little bit about yourself and um, how you came to join uh, PV Spectrum. Okay. Um, I'll go first. I joined PV Spectrum my freshman year. I'm PV23, mm -hmm. biology major from El Paso, Texas. And I kind of just heard around about Spectrum. And then I got close with a lot of the upperclassmen in Spectrum and made it all the way to now president. <laughs> And I've loved it ever since I joined. All right. Um, I guess next up, uh, you, Miss Renee. Uh, okay. So um, I did not join Spectrum until last year, my junior year. Mm -hmm. uh, but I was first introduced, I want to say, around towards the end of my first semester of my sophomore year. Um, I had a friend, she's a transfer student from Howard, and she joined. So I went to one of their um, Christmas events, and mm -hmm. I just liked the vibe of the people, and they seemed really cool. And um, I was in SGA last year, but I didn't really too much really like that. So that was also the jump to have me to join Spectrum. <laughs> but yeah. All right. Um, so... This is, I'll start off with this. So Pride Month was last month, happened in June. And as, um, you know, has been the trend um, the past few years, um, you've seen a lot of uh, companies, you know, send out their posts or tweet, uh, whatever that was saying, you know, happy Pride Month and things like that. So um, the question that I have is, you know, you see companies that, you know, send these uh, tweets and post out uh, supporting, you know, LGBTQ um, issues. And then whenever it comes back, um, it's really just, you know, more seen as symbolic than really any gesture um, because it's all about getting the money. It's all about um, getting the capitalism um, and the commercial um, gains that can be had from um, just really um, sending out the support, which is really just really symbolic. So my question is, what are your thoughts on um, rainbow capitalism? Oh, that's a big one. <laughs> With <laughs> rainbow capitalism, we see it every year. But with our generation during this time, it's like we always look for the receipts. Mm -hmm. We check to see where companies are actually donating their money, things of that nature. And their actions speak louder than just the rainbow picture that they put up on June 1st and take down instantly on July 1st. Mm -hmm. And it just goes to show that it's not really a lot of support and we have to support our own. In a way, it kind of goes hand in hand with black businesses. You know, they need the support from black people. Our LGBTQ businesses need support from LGBTQ people, in a sense, because we know if it's somebody from our community, then they're actually doing it for the community. They're not doing it for clout or anything of that nature. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Oh. Oh. Um. Basically, just to pick it back off with um, what Z said, I totally agree with everything she's saying, but also um, I rather for like, I know that they, this may seem dumb and they may like miss out on money, but if I know as a company that I particularly am not like for the community, whether it's like LGBTQ or Black people or Asian, like whatever, if I know that I'm not for a specific community, then I just don't think it, it would be right for me to advertise that during um, their like spotlight during their time, you know, that we're supposed to celebrate them and recognize their struggles and, you know, 
give outlets um, to help out. So I think that's also like another thing that should be like talked about because even though you may not cater to this one um, particular group or whatever, you still have thousands of other people. So it's like you're not really missing out on too much money, you know, in a sense. Just, mm -hmm. But I just, me personally, for me, I don't want to see, like, for example, Gucci. I don't want to see Gucci, like, representing the LGBTQ during, you know, um, the month of June. But then, like, when I come in the store, mm -hmm. you know, they're treating me some type of way because, like, I like girls and guys also. Like, no, I'd rather for you just to be up front, you know, and just don't even, like, post anything about it. Because you have other people that are still going to shop with you anyways. It yeah. just won't be this selective group of people. Yeah, so I guess what I'm hearing from uh, the both of you is that you'd rather have um, companies and businesses um, not even put out like anything, like not even, you know, put out a post, but rather do the work. Um, rather, you know, if there are any, I would say, LGBTQ um, events or if there's anything that's out there that they could um, either, you know, have like uh, something in the workplace or, you know, there might be... Um, any nonprofit organizations that sort of help out with these issues, you know, send money that way rather than um, just like spend any, uh, rather than just uh, putting out a post. Um, and you, and you've, you you kind of see that with, um, you know, Juneteenth. It's it's cool. Juneteenth was made a, um, you know, a national federal holiday, but um, there are other actions that can be taken that uh, far outmeasured that symbolically. So just continuing on the idea of um, Pride Month, um, you see that these issues are taken up for, you know, that one month, but um, the other 11 months out of the year, they're pretty much dropped. Um, so I'd like to get your thoughts on uh, that. That pretty much just goes back into the theatrics of it all, the clout chasing, and it's mm -hmm. like, they're really just trying to gain people, gain consumers. Because, like, yes, we support you, but only for June. Uh, it's it's all performative, and we have bigger issues than you just putting a rainbow up. You know, even recently, the topic of gay marriage has come back up and mm -hmm. is being attacked yet again. And we just got it few years back and now they're trying to shut it down again it's like we have issues like that people not even being able to marry the person they love just because all these other folks don't appreciate it 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 goes into the idea of just what does somebody else's life have to do with you like you don't have to worry about who's marrying who you can just go about your business and just do you like with the companies advertising only for June, it's like you you have all these other people that are gonna continue to support you regardless. You do not have to come for us because we're gonna get it on our own and do what we need to do to get by. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, so um, I guess my next question is, um, since we're all talking about um, what actions that you know companies can uh, due to uh, support LGBTQ matters, um, I, I'd like to switch it to the individual side. Um, what would you like to see um, more see about um, on the side of allies, people that aren't, uh, would not identify as LGBTQ, but um, what they can do still to help um, that movement? Um, I definitely think, well, this is just with anything, um, mm -hmm whether it be black issues, LGBTQ issues, uh, black queer issues, et cetera, you know, the list goes on. Just definitely, number one, do your research. Like, right. that's, you know, but like I was saying, that comes with just like anything, you know, do your research because, mm -hmm. you know, have, like, this is going to be here. Like, we, as people, and like, what we identify with, like, we're not going anywhere. We're not, like, you know, there's nothing going on. Like, we're gonna be here forever. So instead of like putting hate on us, then you should just get comfortable and be like, okay, maybe I don't like the fact that this person is gay, but that has nothing to do with me. Okay, cool. Like, but I'm still gonna just 
be myself and leave them alone and let them do them because they're living their best life. They're not bothering me. So definitely just like do your research. Um, even like now with me just being in the community, I'm still doing like my research on things because it's things I'm still learning, especially if we're talking from like the spiritual aspect and stuff like that. So, um, yes, that's one thing I, I'm going to say, like, do your research. <laughs> so. Yeah, definitely. I would say if you're going to be an ally, then be a true ally. Uh, just like what Renee said, do your research. Even if you're in the community, there's still a lot to know, know the history, know the background. And I would say biggest thing, just hold yourself accountable. Mm -hmm. You know, don't try to act like you were always an ally, you know, because nobody's perfect. We're all human. But it's just if somebody calls you out on something, like say if people say you have a person who was against LGBTQ and they're trying to change their life around, they're trying to do better as an individual, mm -hmm. then, and when people call them out and don't try to hide, say, yes, that was me, but I know better now. Like take accountability, be an adult about it. Yeah, um, so onto the next question. I believe it was sometime um, in 2016, um, there was a mass shooting of the Orlando a nightclub incident uh, where there is a mass shooter uh, that basically um, shot and killed, I believe, around 49 people. And this was an accident. Uh, sorry, not ex accident, but this was an incident that took place at a, um, a gay bar. And um, just like the horrific uh, events of this nature, um, that really kind of lends you to know that these sorts of issues um, aren't necessarily, you know, everything's not hunky dory in America. Now you can, you know, make the argument that um, America versus other uh, countries, there, there are still countries out there in the world that uh, do not allow same sex marriage that, you know, will actively kill, um, you know, people of that uh, nature, not nature, but who identify themselves at that. And it just really lets you you know, know that such things aren't, you know, one and done, that America isn't perfect and that this is still something um, to, you know, um, that America is still dealing with. So um, like in, in the in the similar vein of like uh, George Floyd and the protests that happened last summer, do you think that there will be a, a sort of watershed movement uh, for the LGBT uh, Q plus movement? Um. I would say yes, because this goes into many different aspects. It's not just LGBTQ issues, because we're LGBTQ community involves everybody. Like we're all from different races, nationalities. So mm -hmm. I feel there would be an influx. And especially since what happened at the Pulse nightclub, that happened during Pride Month at, at a gay bar. And it was actually deemed one of the biggest hate crimes to the LGBTQ community just because of how many people we lost on that day. So I do believe just when things like that happen, it sparks outrage. The start of Pride with the Stonewall riots, it, it took hatred, we took the hatred and we made it positive to advocate for change. And you see that a lot more a lot more in today's age, people are more accepting and we're just pushing forward for more change. And we even see that on campus being more inclusive and just continue to partner with PV Spectrum because we want our members to know that they're safe on campus. And the fact that Spectrum, when it started, it was started because LGBTQ students weren't safe at PV and didn't feel safe. And that's what we're still advocating for even now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, going into my next question, which, which kind of uh, touches on the previous one, is that there are people, you know, that exist in America that um, believe that hate crimes, um, discrimination against LGBTQ plus people um, doesn't necessarily exist. Um, what What is your response whenever you hear or read 
or see anything like that. Just your natural response. You can be as um, honest as you want to be. I'll start with you, Renee. <laughs> um, so my natural response is I'm just going to be like, like, what the F? Like, because, <laughs> but then at the same time, I see this is something. <laughs> It's like a, a a thin line with this because they can mm-hmm. be just completely ignorant and like just they just be like oh, okay yeah whatever yeah but then they could just completely just not know at all and just think like oh yeah you know what they from what they see on social media or the perception like yeah gay people are like cool they seem like they're like doing cool you know but in actuality we have these riots that go on we have people that just kill us because we're living our true selves we have you know you know there's just things in place to show that it's not all like you know roses and chocolates and stuff like that mm-hmm. so my initial reaction would definitely be like oh what the f but i do think it's a fine line because there's some people out there that just don't know they're just not educated you know yep what about you Zippor? i completely agree with renee a lot of it is the lack of exposure because mm-hmm. people really just don't know. And But with exposure, that's also a thin line because some people, they just they don't believe in it. So anything LGBTQ, they're going to keep away from their kids. And then their kids go into schools and they're going to meet other kids who are LGBTQ. And it's like, whoa, hold on there's a boy and he's wearing a skirt and now they don't know how to approach this person yeah. mm-hmm. because they're not exposed to it. And a big thing is just like exposure, but there's people who just with anything are going to be willfully ignorant. And we have to be mindful of those people because it's one thing to have like preferences, but it's another to just blatantly hate somebody and bash that group of people. That's why we lose so many trans brothers and sisters every year because, mm-hmm. you know, they're still trying to live their life uh, and be, you know, in their new bodies and just be their true selves. But people, because of society, toxic masculinity, things like that, it's dangerous for them to come out even as trans, like, oh, I used to be a man and now a dude feels some type of way and now he wants to kill her. You know, it's things like that. Just the ignorance and that's what makes it really hard to be advocates and just live in our truth because people are going to be ignorant about it and it's going to be it's my my opinion i don't like that Mm -hmm. and sometimes we just can't do anything about that yeah and uh this this leads to you know um things which you know kind of work as a bit of an oxymoron um I discussed this a little bit earlier with you, Zippor, but now I'll discuss this with you, Renee, which is the fascinating thing is that, you know, amongst um, the Black community that, um, you know, they're uh, ranked as, you know, one of the most against, you know, LGBTQ rights. Um, and they'll, yet they'll, you know, for all it's worth, they'll be events, not events, but, you know, they'll support Tyler Perry, who for all, you know, sake it's, and purposes, whenever he's, you know, out there as Medea, he's essentially a man in drag, which is, you know, the ultimate sort of hypocrisy to not necessarily um, endorse or just like uh, be for um, these uh, these rights, but yet um, be totally natural with a guy being on stage in drag. So what are, what are your um, thoughts on that sort of hypocrisy that you can be for something, but not yet the other thing? And see that is just it's just plain like ignorance, blissful ignorance rather. Mm-hmm. Um, because we're deemed as like the people that don't support it the most, but yet there's like ties of spirituality within, you know, African um you know, history and dealing with black people and you know being gay or lesbian or queer or whatever like there's strong like history ties in that so to me it's just it's kind of like 
okay, you just simply just don't like know your his your history. You're blissfully ignorant. And even with these people that dress up like you know, like you said, Tyler Perry and all that. Mm-hmm. Now that I'm older, and I'm like you know shedding, you know information and relearning stuff and unlearning stuff. I'm just like, uh, what's that saying? Um, like there's truth to every joke. It's kind of like that. Like I really mm-hmm. feel like these men that get up here and like just like women. I really feel like in some form or fashion that they got a little sugar in their tank. <laughs> like whether they want to admit it or not, or they are suppressing it or not, because why why do you feel so comfortable to mock first of all to mock a black woman and then you feel comfortable dressing up like her, you know, mm-hmm. for entertainment? You're you're gay. Like just it's okay. <laughs> you do not care. It's okay to say that, you know? So I just think that it's it's just blissful ignorance and you know that's something that needs to be talked about also (laughs) yeah um so i'll just um this is my last question and um i usually save it for um um just asking about um how where how people ended up at prairie view but since you know this is dealing with pv spectrum um, I'll ask you, Zipporah, um, how did, uh, if you can ask about uh, the history of uh, PV Spectrum and how it came to be. The history, okay. Well, PV Spectrum's been around since about 2014, 2015. Mm-hmm. It started off very small. And the reason it started, uh, our original advisor was Mrs. Myers. And she had a lot of the LGBTQ students coming to her for help because they weren't safe. They didn't feel safe at all on campus. Hence, Mm -hmm. Spectrum was formed to be a safe place for our LGBTQ students. And since then, we pretty much branched out a little bit. We've gotten a little more recognition. The Resource Center opened in 2019. And that's helped a lot of students and we're able to just make it easier, a easier transition and just be a family for LGBTQ students. Because PV Spectrum is not just for LGBTQ, it's also for our allies. You you don't have to be a part of the community, but we do ask that everyone is respectful, especially when it comes to pronouns and preferred names, because that's a really big issue. And on top of that, with just PV Spectrum and the Resource Center, right now we're trying to get all-inclusive bathrooms Mm -hmm. because even now, in 2021, we have students who don't feel safe going to the bathroom on campus. And that's a problem because the way PV is, it's like, it shouldn't be somebody has to walk all the way back to the phases just so they can use the bathroom because people are still mistreating them people still feel some type of way, those type things. But it also has to be respectful and just we need respect from the other orgs because it's not fair to us that we can support all the other orgs, but they can't be inclusive to our members. Mm -hmm. Because that's some of the biggest issues that PV Spectrum is still having to fight. And this last year, we got a seat on SGA the diversity and inclusion seat, which one of our members was a representative. She's now our vice president, Emery Harris. And it really showed to the rest of the orgs that yes, we are here and we demand the same respect that the big five gets, that all the other orgs get, and that our members matter. They really do matter. And the college experience is not just for our straight students, like everybody deserves a chance. And the way, you know, we advocate and go hard for PV, they should be able to do the same for us. Yeah, I definitely wholeheartedly agree with that. Um, that is the end of this interview. I wish I had more questions to ask, but um, I think we're about at our time limit. So um, thank you so much uh, for the two of you joining us on today. Once again, this was um, Zipporah Williams and Renee. White, uh, the planning event chair um, and the president of PV Spectrum joining us. And uh, thank you so much for being here. And we will see you all later on this week for another episode of The Hill. See you.